Ben, what are we gonna do, Ben? All of our shows are finished, man. <laughs> sorry, sorry. I had to turn on the, the podcast voice. Anyways, guys, welcome back to the Otaku Brothers Podcast. My name is Joseph, one uh, your co-host here, joined with my lovely other co-host, Benson. And today, we are back for episode 55 of the Otaku Brothers Podcast. we got a lot of news for you today, ranging from Blue Lock, Boruto, what? Trigun... Um, a lot of news today. Jujutsu Kaisen, a bunch of stuff to talk about. It's going to be a jam-packed episode. So, without further ado, let's get right into the episode. Ben, how has your week been? What's been what's been going on with you lately these days? Um, oh, hang good. on, hang on. I'm sorry to cut you off, Ben. It was Ben's birthday this weekend. So let's let's a round of applause to the birthday boy. Thank you, thank you. He's thank now you. 21. He can now legally drink. That's pretty cool. That's very cool. Yeah, but how, yeah. How as it? I as I was saying, it was my birthday weekend. Oh, it's <laughs> pretty fun. I guess I say that. I'm sorry. Um, but yeah, I I went out to a bar. It was, it was nice. That's awesome. I had my first legal drink. Yeah, your first ever drink. But, of course, yes, yes, yes. Yeah, first uh, yeah. first ever drink. Done. We're not in yeah. Japan. It's not 18 here, so. Yeah, first ever drink. Yeah. We don't we don't promote under drinking here. No sir. I need to talk over this podcast. I don't drink. I just sit in my room and watch anime. All right, Joseph. Sorry. Anyways, that was pretty much the highlight of my week. So yeah, now I'm back to homework and school. Back to reality. See, that's why I hate like going on vacation. You know, it's just like yeah, for real. You just gotta come back and then it's just yeah. Oh, it's rough. But yeah. Um, so, well, gl- Ben, I'm glad you had a great weekend, man. It's awesome to hear. Thank you. Thank happy, you. happy again, birthday. Um, I'm really happy for you, man. Um, we love you all over here. So, you know, send you, you. send you some birthday wishes from over here in the old north. But yeah. The old north. Anyways, um, my week was pretty eventful as well. I had a busy weekend. Um, went to a family wedding. That was a lot of fun. Caught up on some anime. Finished Love is War season three. And oh my god, Ben, you need to finish it as soon as possible, dude. <laughs> it was amazing. I loved it so much. And I'm very excited to watch the movie somehow, somewhere. Um, but yeah, anyways, Love is War. It, it's so weird because without spoiling anything for Ben, I am very curious to see how they do a season four of this. Um, it seems like, I'm not going to say everything was answered. There's a lot of um, like, what what's what's next you know what i mean but mm-hmm. uh it was a good ending um it really felt like an end to the show but still well, we still have the movie to watch so. exactly that's why i'm like how is there like i, I don't know i'm excited to see because apparently there's still a lot more content in the manga um and actually i um i finally took advantage of that barnes and noble so i picked a volume two above this war um so that was a lot of fun as well as just because in volume 19 so i'm looking forward to reading those but yeah anyways finished love is war season three amazing um I don't know, Ben. What anime should I start next, dude? I know um, I just said I'm going to finish up some shows off camera, but... Personally... There's so many, like, good options. I think you should watch Dr. Stone. See, but that's... the next season is coming around the corner. It's right around the corner. See, but then I'm going to have another show to keep up with right off the bat, and... Hey, that's... It's perfect for the podcast. That's true. That's true. Yeah, that might be a good call, but... I think it's a show you'd like, and then if you do catch up to it by the time season three airs... Then it would it would blend in perfectly with the podcast. That would be perfect. When does it air? Isn't it like April? I think it's mid April. Oh so. boy, <laughs> I think I could do. Oh, how many is each season? It's like twelve episodes, or is it twenty four? Well, I feel like it's. It has to be twelve. Let me right? see. Please be. If it's twelve, I could definitely do twenty four episodes. Yeah. Twenty stone. But if it's like if it's a lot more than that, I don't know. I think it's. Wait, season one, episode nine. One, two, three, four, five. It's um, it's okay if you can't find it. That's no, just uh, um, just curious. So, season one is twenty five episodes, but season two is eleven. <laughs> okay. So I don't know. It's kind of weird. That's a lot, dude. I don't know if I'd be able to watch all that. In half that is a lot. lot. Especially with the school and everything, I'd be like. I don't know. I'll try. I'll try, though, because there's a lot of good shows that I want to watch. But Dr. Stone would be going to talk about the pod, especially because we've never talked about it before. Um, yeah. 
You know what, man? Maybe that. Maybe that's just what I'll do. Maybe I'll watch, I'll start Doctor Stone. You don't have to catch up to it before the, the part, you know. I mean. Yeah, I would like to. You know what I mean? Maybe yeah. one weekend, just kind of binge it. But we'll see. Anyways, yeah, that's for that's a story for another day. We're here to talk about current stuff. Um, yeah, Ben. I think um, without further ado, do we mention everything? I think it's time we just got on to yeah. the episode. Jump right in. Shall we? Let's just. How, who says that? Oh, it's uh, it's his face. Philip DeFranco. Philip, Philip Franco, that's the name. Uh, let's just jump right into it. But anyways, Ben, you want to hit us with our first topic today on the news side of things? Yeah. So we had the Soul Leveling trailer drop. Yes. Um, that is another anime that we are excited for. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Did you watch it, Joseph? I did. I did. And I was very, very excited for it. Um, I think I made a YouTube short about it, I think. But, yeah, it looked really good. Animation style yeah. looked really cool. And I think, yeah, I mentioned, I mentioned this in my short. I kind of love how... Is it is it a Japanese manga? I thought it was. It's like Korean, it's a Korean right? Manga. Okay, yeah. yeah, that's what I thought. And I really looking through the manga, I really liked how um, it kind of it seems like that sort of art style that they're doing in the manga kind of resembles a lot more of Western graphic novel art styles, similar to yeah. like you know maybe like Batman <laughs> comics or like modern day Marvel comics, you know. Mm-hmm. So it was it's very, it was very refreshing. And interesting to see the difference in animation styles compared to traditional manga that we're used to. So, I liked it a lot. Um, I haven't seen much, but the few panels that I have seen look pretty sick. Um, is, don't 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 sick. really know what the show's about except I think it's like an OP guy with a sword. So, yeah, um, that's pretty much all I know. But it looks like a lot of fun. What about yeah, you? it looks. Um, I read. A majority of volume one mm-hmm. and so far the trailer looks pretty good yeah so yeah i'm pretty excited for it same same very very excited um should be a good good watch definitely but yeah. um moving on and sticking with the trailer drops we have jujitsu kaisen season two baby wow oh yeah oh man i just watched the trailer right now for the first time with ben and it looks really really good love seeing young gojo and seto I think it's his name right? Or it's Ghetto. 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 Um, yeah, it was it was really cool. Um, I have read the manga. I'm, I've finished the first arc of this flashback arc, so um, mm-hmm. it's going to be a lot of fun. But Ben did have a complaint, however, which um, I'm curious to see what everyone else thinks. Um, but ben, so yeah, go ahead and say, go ahead. Tell me your issue. So if you watch this trailer, <laughs> you might have picked up on something. I know Joseph did, like yeah. pretty much immediately. But Toji Fushigiro mm-hmm. is uh, being voiced by the voice actor of Dio. Mm-hmm. Or Z. And notably Dio. Mm-hmm. Yes. But I guess that kind of caught me off guard. Yeah. Because, I don't know. Like, seeing him, he kind of just looks like... Excuse me. <laughs> ah, sorry. Uh, I don't, he just doesn't look like he'd have that deep kind of mm. voice. Like, um, I don't know. That's caught me off guard. And I don't know if I'll ever get used to that. Yeah, I think it's it's one of those things. It's one of those voices that is very iconic, too. Um, it's like, as soon as, yeah. as soon as you hear the voice, you're like, oh, that's Dio. So it's kind of like, you know, it takes you away from the character a bit. Um, which is an issue that I have with some voice actors. Um, but I don't know. I think it sounds okay. Um I think what you said is true that since it is a flashback arc, that might be the case for why it's like a little bit more prominent there. He's a younger guy, um, but who knows? Um, it's going to be very interesting to see how things play out. Um, yeah, hopefully, maybe they'll, maybe you'll change voice up, or I don't know. We'll see how it happens or what happens. Um, so, you're actively reading the manga, right? I wouldn't say actively. I'm still in the. Um, well- all right. Well, like you I, were actively. Yes. Reading it. Yeah. I'm caught up. I'm on volume sixteen right now. So there's there's four more volumes. I'm like I'm like three fourths done with the Shibuya incident arc. So oh, yeah. I'm almost done with it. Um, some crazy stuff has been happening, but I am trying to constantly read the manga. Yes. It's just been very busy with school. Um, yeah. I had to read some books for school, but I just got volume nineteen, like I said, and I'm once I'm finished with this book, um, I'm reading for school. I'm hopping back on the manga grind because I have a lot of stuff to read. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
but yes, it's one of the very few stuff that I'm reading that's continuous right now. That and yeah. Chainsaw Man, basically. But yeah, that's uh, that's what I've been up to, Ben. Have you you've been reading any manga as well lately, or? No. Um, yeah, that's just fair. the just Borto whenever it comes out. But mm-hmm. Yeah, I get that's that. once a month. I get that, man. That's good. I'm caught up with the Chainsaw Man manga. It's a little off topic, but oh, it's so fire right now, bro. I forgot. I have I'm you... stuck. I'm a couple weeks behind. Bed. Oh my god. You should just like read it real quick after we're done with this. Yeah. Because they. Yeah. But anywho, moving mm-hmm. on. Yeah, moving on. Um, we yeah, got yeah. some confirmation about my hero. Um, I mean, we all knew this was coming. Um, but my hero season seven has been announced. Uh, we got a pretty good teaser at the end of the episode, which we'll get into more later. Um, but yeah, season seven is coming. Ben, as someone who I don't know if you've like fully read the manga, or if you just know what happens, but is, is you think season seven is this going to be the final season? Uh, I think so. Okay. Wow. Yeah. From what I remember, yeah. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Because that. Um, the new girl that came out, yes. Uh, I remember her getting introduced in the story, and like, it wasn't that long ago. So, oh wow, okay, that's probably a year ago, maybe. Dang, that's gonna be. So I think I think this might be the final season, if not, uh, the play ended with a movie or something. Mm-hmm. Yeah, oh, good old movies. That's a good segue into our next topic, Ben. If you want to take that. Oh God. Yeah, I've... Sorry. What? I don't know. I'm just disappointed. So, oh, yeah, that's fair. As just said at the beginning of the episode, all of our shows are starting to end. Mm-hmm. And the show is ending. That means we're getting some more stuff confirmed. So, with Blue Lock and the season finale yesterday, Saturday the 25th. Um, and after that, we also got a confirmation for season two as well as a Blue Lock movie. Um, but unfortunately, the movie is for the spinoff story with Nagi and Rayo. Shucks. Which I heard is still pretty good. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm still excited for that. But um, I was hoping it would be for the show itself because mm-hmm. I know one of my friends, he's read the manga, and he said that the next arc after this is probably. is Well, he said it is the craziest arc so far. Oh, wow. I was hoping that would get some, some movie animation, but. Hopefully, since the the show's gotten more popular, mm-hmm. uh, they'll have a lot more money for budget, and maybe they won't rush it. Yeah, I feel like it was kind of rushed. Mm-hmm. But, Do yeah, you? That's, was it kind of rushed? I don't know. So I feel like some parts, like compared to the manga, they could have put in a little bit more detail. Yeah, I guess that's fair. That's just my opinion. I've read the manga, but yeah. Well, I I am also as well very sad. That Blue Lock is not going to be getting a movie. We just finished the f- season finale today, and oh my god, it was so good, dude. Yeah. Um, but also, Ben, a quick question: Is the movie going to be? Is it a prequel movie, or is it like like their it's first like, time in Blue Lock? Their first, the first. Stage? It's like concurrent. It's like concurrent with the Blue Lock. Okay. It's just it's the same like timeline. It's just happening in Nagi's point of view. Oh, okay. So up until. I think it's through Sweet. that match whenever they beat Team Y. I think that's the team Nagi was on yeah. in the first election. I think it's up through that, and then that's it. Wow, that's pretty cool. Well, that's still gonna be cool. It's kind of so it's kind of like the uh, the Sao movie with Asuna. Yeah, that's sick. That'll be cool. Um, that's dope, man. Well, that's sick. I'm excited. Very yeah. excited for that. I, um. Yeah, God, it just. I hope. I hope it's not too long till we get a season two. Um, Hopefully, it's end of this year. Yeah, for real. At dress up. <clears throat> for real, but anyways, grudges aside. Moving on, we got some more movie talk, Ben. Um, so, if y'all didn't know, we talked about this a while ago. Spy Family did get confirmed for a season two as well of a movie. Um, you know, one thing I don't think we touched on a bit much, Ben. I, 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 I really don't. I really didn't realize how many people really, really like Spy Family. Like it's a, it's, it's uh, pretty big. Like it, like, it took off. Yeah. It, it really. Took, I don't know what our issue was, Ben. Maybe we just, <laughs> maybe we just didn't get something. 
But like apparently people love the manga, the anime is really good. I don't know what it was for me. I just feel like it was it was solid, it was really good, but like it wasn't, you know, compared to like the stuff that we're watching right now, like Blue Hawk, My Hero. Eh, you know, I'd rather watch that over Spy Fam. I don't know. Mm-hmm. But anyways, that's a little off track. Um don't get me wrong, I still love Spy Family. Um but yeah, anyways, Spy Family movie got confirmed. Um, a while back as well as the season two and now we finally have a official title and release date for the movie uh the spy family movie is going to be called spy family code white so um this probably goes along with its release date it'll be released december 22nd so code white could mean probably something to do with christmas like snow cocaine um oh why not? yeah so i'm just trying to i'm just trying to connect the dots here you know yeah was that too much of a leap, you think, or? I just a little bit considering okay. the, the yeah. tone of the show. Yeah, but... that's fair. That's fair. Um, but yeah, nonetheless, hopefully it'll be a fun movie. It'll be a good Christmas movie to go see. Um, mm-hmm. I definitely might take Ben to that, so that'll be a fun little Christmas Excuse date. Me. But yeah, so Spy Family, just it's still relevant. It's still pumping strong. Uh, good to good to see. Um, so yeah, this next thing. Ben, do you know anything about it? I saw it, and I'm not gonna lie; I haven't really heard anything about it. I just thought it was interesting because I, uh, no. I don't know what this means. I have not. Okay, all right. So, for those of y'all who have never heard of the show Horror Mia, um, it is a rom-com show about a guy and a girl. This dude, he's kind of more edgy and uh, emo-esque. He likes to wear like ear pieces or um. I guess piercings and he wears his hair in a bun and he's kind of like the, an e-boy basically and mm-hmm. pretty much this one girl falls in love with him and it kind of breaks the stereotype tropes in rom-coms about the will they won't they and right off the bat they kind of start dating um so it was a nice really refreshing thing whenever it happened but it kind of just ended after season one but for some reason it is getting a season two i think oh uh, Kept the first horror movie return with a new anime. There's a manga. Sorry, I'm trying to read if I see anything. So yeah, this is this isn't exactly a season two. It's kind of like um, cause season one is the main story. So I was trying yeah. to figure out a new anime in the West skip for this week. This new one will be bringing back the stuff. Yeah, so I don't really know much about it, but apparently. Um, oh, so it's going to be called Horror Me a Piece. Some of the gaps by them. Okay, okay. So, yeah, it's basically like um, a Dragon Ball Z Kai. <laughs> um, it's, um. it's like a re-release, but it's also adding in more stuff from the manga that got left out of, you know, the story. So, yeah. that's interesting. I don't know. Sorry, I'm sorry if that just was worded really that's weirdly. That's pretty cool. It just came out on the fly. But yeah, um, I don't know. I, I personally really liked Horror Mia. The intro is a banger. I love it. Um, yeah, it's it's a good rom com. It's definitely a good change of pace from shows like Rent a Girlfriend. Mm-hmm. Shouldn't let that sit there for a second. Oh, uh, that's okay. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, that's all I had to say. Ben, you can take the last topic. Um. So, uh, Borto also ended today. The yes. first part. Mm-hmm. Glad they did that. Should have done that after the first arc, probably. <laughs> Lomo Shiki and all that. Um, but yeah, the next part is airing in what December, I think, or in the fall. Oh, wow. I don't know if we have an official date, but they're gonna take a super long hiatus, but it'll be back at the end of the year. So yeah, hopefully that means better animation. And less filler episodes. Those are the two positives that I'm looking for. And you know what, Ben? Let's let's put this on the record right now. If if it if if we hear if we start to hear good stuff about it, I think we should start watching it once it comes back. <laughs> I mean, it's kind of crazy because it's like people have been saying good stuff about it like these past few weeks, and mm. so. I think the break helps. If if this break, I want to let's watch the we'll watch the first episode then when it comes back, and if we see okay. if we see results, if we see results, we'll we'll start watching it weekly. Because mm. from what you've told me in the manga, from what I've seen so far from these past two episodes we just watched today, it looks really really good. Um, 
I wish the animation was better. Especially, it just it, it's a shame. Since it's just it's like being the done. problem it has is it's so inconsistent. Yes, and yeah, that is, like, that is a big issue. I don't know. It's weird. Like the first part with Momoshiki and all that is super good, and then the quality just kind of went down, and then went back up for that one arc, and then went back down. I will say, That's... I think one of the best times it was animated was during the. Ooh, it was like the introduction of Kawaki. It was a fight scene between Kawaki yeah, versus that, part like, two. that rock dude or something like that. And yeah, I will and say, I whenever I saw that, I was like, holy crap, this animation is... I, I thought it was so amazing. Like yeah. the fight, the choreography, everything about that whole little arc was amazing. So I just really wish you could see that quality and consistency, man. I mean, yeah. just give it a map up, bro. <laughs> um no. I mean, it's with the same studio that that did Bleach. So I was I, I was about to say that it's just it's a shame that it's not getting the same amount of love as Bleach's animation is getting. So I think, um, I mean, I'm pretty sure Bleach is pretty close to being done since it airs in July. Oh wow, that's, that's how like, soon it comes back, bro! Oh my god, dude, that's yeah. crazy. <laughs> I'm so that. maybe they're just taking some time to work on that. Mm-hmm. Damn. That's that's good, man. I'm happy to hear that. I really am. Yeah. That's that's very exciting. But <clears throat> yeah, I think without further ado, that was all our news we had this week. I'm really glad we wrapped that up kind of quickly. Um, yeah. Because we got some shows to talk about for y'all. But before we go on, I just wanted to mention two cool things real quick. Um, one is that Attack on Titan released a cool fan art or not fan art illustration, but an illustration. Uh, I believe to commemorate. I mean, that's what I'm assuming. That's what it's for. That's the only thing that makes sense to me about why they would release that. But mm-hmm. pretty much, Japan won the World Baseball Classic series. Um, I was fortunate enough to go to a game this summer or this spring break. I mean, so that was a lot of fun. But to commemorate this, the artist for Attack on Titan decided to draw um, Armin, Mikasa, Levi, and Aaron in baseball uniforms, which is pretty cool. So, I just thought that was kind of neat. Um, nothing, nothing crazy, but yeah. Another cool thing I wanted to mention real quick is that I saw the movie John Wick today, um, and it, it just does relate to anime. I swear, um, a, a whole lot of the first part of the movie takes place in uh, Osaka, which was really cool. Oh, I've been. Cool. I really think you should watch it, um, just because of it's so beautiful seeing all the Japanese culture incorporating into the fight scenes and their whole culture so that's a lot of fun but the main reason i'm bringing it up is because a character gets introduced in this movie and her name is akira um which if any of y'all did not know is an anime movie and it's also keanu reeves favorite anime movie so it's his favorite movie question yes in the movie did i know you're talking about akira did they do anything with the akira slide I don't know the Akira slide exactly, but he does ride a motorcycle, and there are some reminiscent scenes that I believe. Um, does he? Uh, does he slide it? He not on the no, not like sideways. Okay. Like, not like that, but he he does ride a motorcycle in a scene. Oh, okay. That's all I'll say. But yeah, it's a lot of fun seeing all the Japanese culture in throughout the first half of the movie. So yeah, and I just thought it was cool that her name's Akira, just because you know, I'm ass- I'm assuming that it has to be connected. To this. Um, <laughs> But yeah, anyways, that was a little sidetrack notice. Let us, let us, I like let us, let us let get us. right into our shows. We got, are we going to talk about Boruto then? We can. Um, we can. Yeah. Okay. Well, I guess let's start with Boruto then, since that's right. kind of not our main show that we cover. Yeah. But, so. Yeah, go for um, it. I asked, Joseph if he, I asked Joseph if he wanted to watch it. Um, so we only watched the two most recent episodes. Yeah. Um, Thank God. So, in two ninety two, the second to last episode, um, we see basically Borto and Kaoki fighting, um, and then previous like earlier on in I guess this arc they had talked about how if Borto ever loses control again, that uh, Kaoki would end up killing him, and that's kind of what happened in this episode. So Boruto kind of regained control for a second. He's like, all right, let's uh, give it her whole up here into the deal. So Uh-oh. 
Are very gruesome graphic parts. Yes, yeah, very was. Dimes the hole in Bortha's chest. Mm hmm. And I, and like in the in like the impact frame, you can like see his spine. I thought that was a interesting detail. Yep, it was very gruesome actually. I will give it credit. Yes, yeah. but um, that's how the uh, second to last episode ended, and then in this most recent episode, we see that. Um, Boruto is actually not dead because, um, Momoshiki, uh, saved him. So basically if Momosh if Boruto had died, then Momoshiki would have died. So he used, uh, their karma that was kind of saved for Momoshiki's body to restore, uh, the hole in Boruto's body and now he's alive, uh. And yeah, now Boruto is a hundred percent in Otsuki, which means he can be fed to the Ten Tails, which means Code is gonna go after him again. Yada yada yada. And then a little surprise at the end of the episode, uh, Boruto and Kaoki are sitting on Naruto's stone face. It's kind of like a little, uh, a little foreshadowing to the time skip. And then at the end, they kind of showed it for a little bit, which I thought was pretty cool. Kind of reminding everyone what the what the whole story's about. Sorry, so I I was just trying to do some research for something that we were gonna talk about later on, mm -hmm. but yeah, um, no, I think Ben summed it up perfectly. It was a great episodes, and I will I will say, again, we were talking about the Boruto animation. There, that scene that Ben's talking about at the very end of the final episode with Boruto and Kawaki standing over um, Lord Seventh um, and getting ready to fight and just saying their whole resolves and ideologies that they plan on following and that we believe will foreshadow into the events that are to come in the time skip that's going to occur later on. Um, I, I will say that the animation at that part of the episode was phenomenal. It it mm -hmm. really it really just made me like think of how much better this show would be if it stuck with just doing that animation. Um, I really think it is a waste of money to be, and I really wish they understood that. Um, that I really think yeah. that they could profit so much more from cutting down the filler and just taking their time, man. I really think that they do, that they could. I mean, yeah. Um, so yeah, I don't know. It's it's very interesting. Um, I just hope that. Uh, they figure out, they get their stuff together and they figure yeah. it out. But yeah, overall it was a lot of fun. It was a great two episodes. The fight was actually a lot of fun. Um, but yeah, I just, I kind of, it just, it feels, I don't want to say empty, but like, I just really wish I was more attached. You know what I mean? So obviously I could be attached if I, for some reason, decided to sit down and watch that whole damn show. But um, yeah, no way. it's just, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I think one one more thing. Um, I think in the fight of in like uh, two ninety two or whatever, mm -hmm. there were there were there was a callback to Naruto and Sasuke's final fight. Oh really? Um, yeah. Like at one point, Kawaki had used Borto's hand to make the fireball jutsu. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh, yeah. that looks pretty familiar. Oh, so yeah, I thought That's that was sick. pretty cool. Yeah, actually, speaking of Sasuke, I was going to ask you, where where is Sasuke during all this? <laughs> I think he's... Is he doing the whole dinosaur thing? Or... Uh, he was doing something. I forgot. Uh -oh. He was looking for something. And this is... So Naruto is still able to go into sage mode. He just, he's lost all his power with Kuruma. That's what he's lost. Yeah. Wow. That is Tough. a shame. And a nerf. It's kind of crazy. I don't know if I'm just nostalgic about it now, but it's like... I, it's, it's like, I have two different feelings towards Boruto, the show. It, at, at, at the same time, or at, at one, I don't know how I'm trying to say, at, at the same time, I really love how Boruto is expanding its universe, the whole Naruto universe. I think it's cool how yeah. they've introduced these new sorts of, sort of subclasses, if you will, um, with Karma and these new type of Renegons and, um, the new type of eyes but at, at the same time it, it is kind of sad seeing how different things are compared to what it was in naruto and naruto shippuden you know what i mean 
I, yeah. I guess it, it was just so much more simpler. I guess is the right way to put it. It's just you had, like, literally, the only eyes you had were, like, what? Sharingans, Renegons, and, like, the Byakuyans, or whatever they're called. Um, and it's like, I just feel like there's so much now in this world. And I, I guess that another th- reason that I feel that way is just because, yeah, I haven't read the anime or read the manga and or have watched the anime. But um, it's just, and it sucks, too, to see naruto in this like kind of broken state whereas you, you yeah. see the end of shippuden and he's like this is the guy who saved the whole fucking world and to look at him now it's just it's really sad you know to see that yeah. how much shit he's gone through and how it's just so different now and how mm-hmm. he, it's like you can't rely on him anymore to be the the best there ever was you know what i mean yeah it's so, uh, tough you know mm-hmm. like it's I don't know. Yeah. He like he can't do anything, you know. He's no, he's, he's it's not that it's not that he's like weak in any sense. It's just like the people that are the problem now. They're so much stronger than mm-hmm. he is. So it's like. He but can't... I think that's what makes it so sad is that we see him at his height and at, at the end of Shippuden, and it's like, damn. So it's like years and years of prosperity are coming for the village, you know. And it's like. Yeah. Sh- it's like all for what you know what i mean i don't know it's like i don't want to say it it's like at the same time it kind of feels like it undervalues like what happens in shippuden but at the same time i know that that's not a fair thing to say i don't know it's it's a weird feeling that i have about it but Mm -hmm. um i think that's just kind of the whole point of life you know just shit happens you gotta move on Mm -hmm. um can't be in the spotlight forever, but yeah. I don't know. Weird, weird little tangent of mine, but yeah. Anyways, it was great two episodes. It it really felt good watching and being emerged into the Naruto universe once again. I will say so. Cheers, Ben. Thank you. Of course, anytime. <laughs> well, you also wait like seven months probably, but yeah, anytime. But. <clears throat> Anyways, moving on to our next show. So that was one season finale. Well, all the shows we watched today were finales. That's funny. So moving on to our next finale, we have Trigun Stampede. And surprisingly, Ben, I did not know this until just right now when I was looking it up. Did you know the same studio that did Beastars did Trigun Stampede? That's pretty cool. Um, yeah, I didn't know. Ben, I really wish you would like watch no, Beastars. No, he's bringing stuff like every other episode. I know, episode, but it's just it. like... It's no, 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 no. I was watching that anime man guy, and he was—he's one of like the biggest B star advocates. And he was like, "And I'm, I'm gonna start using this quote from now on. If being a furry means that you get to like B stars, then don't I'm... don't finish that sentence, please." All right, all right. I just want you to know that that's how I feel about how good the show has been, and I really think that you need to have a more open and progressive mindset. That's all I'm gonna say. I do. I, I don't. I don't want to watch it. I just, I don't see a valid reason to be given. You know what I mean? No. Okay. Anywho. um, Yeah, Trigun Stampede. Final episode. I was trying to look around because obviously this is a remake of the original Trigun. um, But I had some questions because I had heard that, I don't know, maybe they were thinking of doing some more. um, But I don't know. Um, I thought that I heard that they were, and it says that they, they may, but nothing is confirmed. Um, so yeah, but anyways, uh, Trigon Stampede, it was a great finale to, um, an interesting and exciting series that we watched. I think going into it, me and Ben had no expectations at all. We were just kind of like, let's check this out. And I will say I was thoroughly enjoyed. It was, I'm not going to say it was anything groundbreaking to me, but it was definitely interesting and I think a great change of pace from a lot of the shows that we had been watching. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think that it, it is very hard to do 3d animation. Well, um, but obviously if, if, you know, if you've watched B star spend, you, you would know that the studio is more than capable of bringing these 3d CGI full, uh, episodes to life and Trigun stampede was no exception. I really don't think I noticed any bad animation, um, throughout this series, so that was a lot of fun, but yeah, I guess a recap of the episode, it kind of starts with Meryl, uh, the girl news reporter, saving Vash at the beginning, and 
we get this kind of Vash reawakening. Um, and yeah, he pretty much fights knives to save the world. And it was an epic fight. I really enjoyed it, Ben. Um, it was good. And then we get the finale where they both get thrown into space. Knives tries to grab the cube that's going to that it would bring the plants together and Vash ends up stopping him but in the process kills Knives accidentally or Knives kills mm-hmm. himself by burning alive completely it was actually very creepy and very gruesome um, yeah it was very... <clears throat> but it was good nonetheless and we also get that Vash lived he was supposed to die and it looked like he should have died because <laughs> it was a massive like bombing like nuclear yeah. bomb that goes off and destroying the whole city and somehow we get a two years later recap where it turns out he's actually alive and i think he has like no memory it seems um, that's what it seems like so i don't is this supposed to be this isn't a prequel is it no because i did notice something um whenever the first episode aired and then watching this one mm-hmm. uh, i remember the first episode <laughs> That they said a lot of things that people were complaining about is that they left out a character. Mm-hmm. And that character is Millie Thompson, which is the girl who wants to work under Meryl at the end. I remember I noticed that. Yeah. But I don't think it's a prequel. I think they just changed the story run a little bit to, yeah. to work better. But. Um, I think the ending is definitely building up to something. I don't know if... I'm assuming it's in the original Trigun, but... Um, obviously, that shot with the moon and, I guess, what's supposed to be Earth. Okay, wait. No. Oh. I think I was correct. I think this is not... It's not... Well, you were right. It, it's, a pre, it's a reboot. That is what Trigun Stampede is. However, I think that it is also a prequel in the sense that I remember telling you that there is supposed to be a final phase of the show. Yeah. And I think there are going to be more episodes from what it says here. President Orange hasn't revealed how many episodes will constitute this final phase and or when we can expect the return of Ash the Stampede. Did offer was a new trailer and poster that hints at the idea that Trigun Stampede might be bringing Vash closer to his original look along with sporting a bounty that matches his first foray. Yeah, I remember th- oh, I remember that too, because people were also complaining that his bounty wasn't high enough, but at the end it was like $60 billion or something. Yeah, so... Maybe it is, I don't know. Yeah, so maybe it is not... It, it is a reboot at its core, that's what it is. But maybe it is... It's playing, it's doing it differently. Well, that'd be cool. I'd be happy to see it come back. And yeah, because... That'd be cool if it's a reboot, but it's just telling a more origin story. Well, let's well. ask our our friend how the original Trigun. Or not, I don't know. Mm-hmm. I don't want spoilers for it now, but at least our, well, we can ask him if this happened in the yeah in the show. Mm-hmm. Nonetheless, though, it was a great show, um, a lot of fun. It, I had a lot of Fallout, um, Borderlands type vibes from the show. It was a good time. It was it was a yeah. fun like like we said break from all the other shows that we'd been watching. So I enjoyed it a lot. Um, it was a great show. Um, I, I mean, there's really not too much to say about it. I feel like that's how it kind of was every week. Mm. It didn't give me much to think about, but it was just a great show overall. Yeah. So, yeah, I think that was a great one. But anyways, moving on to our next episode, Benson, we have My Hero Academia. Episode oh, yeah. 138, another season finale. Like we said, season 7 has been confirmed. And this was a good episode, Ben. It kind of was a little bit slower. and But, however, we did get a lot of um, good good wrap-ups with a lot of characters that we needed. Mm-hmm. Um, most notably, All Might, who has kind of, been, kind of been very distant lately and needed that push that he so desperately needed and got today. Um, which was very happy and very pleasing to see. So the episode opens with All Might kind of visiting his statue that um, kind of, I don't know, All Might is kind of going through this phase right now where he thinks he's helpless and, you know, he needs like a push. And this is when we get the awesome reintroduction of our favorite boy, favorite villain, Stain, the hero killer, 
who has 40 confirmed hero kills, which is pretty crazy. Um, yes. And I don't know if you remember this from Season 2. He pretty much made a vow that he only wants to be killed by All Might because All Might's the only real hero out there. He has morals that he fully sticks to, and you know he won't back, won't back down from them. So it was kind of cool seeing how Stain has kind of blossomed in this new world and kind of become sort of a vigilante anti-hero, if you will. Um, mm -hmm. It was a lot of fun seeing him interact with All Might, especially since these two are very big deals in My Hero Academia. Um, I don't know. I was very on edge. I didn't know what would happen to All Might if Stain was going to kill him or if Stain wanted to be killed by him and was going to force him to do something nasty. But uh, it worked out. It was a lot of fun. Um, and Stain kind of gives um, All Might this talking to, um, and yeah, it was it was a lot of fun. I liked it a lot, Ben. Um, I actually have a question for you, Ben. So, What's up? Um, a lot of people theorized that um, they. I mean, it's kind of like an old theory, but I think it's one that still has a lot of you know questions. I really don't think it means anything, but I don't understand why not. <clears throat> It uh -huh. has to do with All Might and being quirkless. So, if you know All Might, obviously, we've heard through the story countless times, he doesn't have a quirk, just like Deku. Yeah. Um, however, it doesn't make any sense, then, why his body physically changes. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I think they answered that at one point. Did they? But I don't... I think they had to have. Because that doesn't know. make any sense, right? How... Well, I guess the only thing that, um, that can be or that can answer that is that he still has that little bit of one for um, all. One for all. Left. But see, the other heroes who have who had one for all never were able to do that. That's one of the things that kind of like throws a wrench in that, doesn't it? The sense like. Mm -hmm. is yeah, my... it's one for all. Maybe he can do anything with it. What Maybe is... he found out something that they didn't. What are you trying to say, Ben? I'm just saying. Maybe he found something that they didn't. Know. Are you basing this off of facts and logic? Or are you I'm just saying he had one for all. And I am just, I'm, hey, I'm just asking you a question. You don't gotta get so offended. I'm just saying. I just I feel like you're attacking me. Oh my god. I'm sorry, Ben. Did you... Ben? Hello? Did you... What happened? I accidentally hung up. <laughs> I didn't mean to. I thought you were just... Oh, my God. The recording stopped. But did it actually? No, I'm just kidding. Oh, my God. That's Anyways. Scary. Yeah. I don't know. I just think that's a very interesting um, thing about All Might's character. Um... Who knows? Maybe we'll get some answers to that later on in the show. Probably not, because Ben's not making it's the okay. face. But... Okay. Anyways. Wait. I have to search this stuff now, Joseph. Okay. Well, I'll continue my feelings about the I'm episode while I do that. So, after All Might meets Stain, Stain kind of talks him back into reawakening his true self and that just because he's not big and strong anymore and has one for all doesn't mean that he can't stop being a hero and i think all mate kind of realizes that and uh. it's very i think it's for me it's very important to his character and how his mentorship towards deku is going to go on throughout the rest of the series so that was very pleasant i really oh. liked that first half okay. of the episode and then the second half is kind of just nothing special it's kind of deku reawakening re meeting up with his friends and then, yeah, we kind of get a teaser for what's to come for Season 7 with the introduction of the number one hero from America. Star. Awesome. Star. I think that's her name, right? Star. Name Stars and Stripes. Stars and Stripes. That's such. That's so sick, bro. That is an awesome name. Um, I have, I it mean... It looks so cool. It makes, yeah. it makes sense that I feel like America's heroes would be stronger than Japan's because it's a bigger country and has more people, so... Um, I, I hope we get to see some more American heroes. That'd be pretty cool. Um, but yeah, that's shout out He's America, awesome. man. Shout out USA. A little, <laughs> little intervention, but oh. so this guy explained it kind of well. Please, I can't explain it. Um, so basically, before 
Oh my god, one for all, he's kind of like Deku. He was kind of skinny and stuff, so basically he he trained and like worked out a bunch to get that big, right? So whenever he gets big, he's literally just flexing his muscles. Oh. But he can't sustain that without... um. One for all. Yeah. <laughs> so that's all that is. <laughs> You're telling me you can flex your muscles that hard? Hey, I mean, whatever works, right? I mean, maybe that's why he yeah. always he's always smiling in that form. Because you yeah. really have to to flex that hard. Oh, man. That's... Well, that's, that's an explanation, I guess. Yeah. That's, that's something. But, yeah. Anyways, it was a great season finale. Ben, do you have anything else to say? Um... No. I'm really glad we have to see Stars and Stripes, though. Mm-hmm. I wasn't expecting that. Yeah. That well, was... I guess... I guess... That was the image of every season you, but... finale has to have some kind of cliffhanger, mm-hmm. and that was it. So. Well, that brings us into our actually the final show with an, a big cliffhanger for what's mm-hmm. to come: Blue Lock, season one oh, finale. Yeah. A lot of stuff happens. It, I I have a lot of takes, Ben. Um, very good t- or, not takes, but not takes. I don't even know why I said takes, but just a lot of um stuff to talk about. Mm-hmm. with this episode first of all we finish off the match between the world's five versus rin isagi bachara and um the two other Ryu. glam uh, and... pokimitsu and yeah. Ur- uryu yeah yeah i think so the match kind of goes exactly how you expect it to with team blue lock losing one to five um i'm very curious ben because they said that every team played them I wonder if any team also scored or scored more than one point. If so, um, maybe that'd, that'd be cool the, if they showed know. us that. That um, yeah, that would be cool. Mm-hmm. But I'm sure every team, every team definitely lost. Oh yeah, hundred um, percent. No, yeah, hundred percent. But it's just it would be interesting to see. I'm, I'm so, I really wish they did. I don't know why they didn't. Um, yeah. I really wish they said the scores just because it would kind of tell you where each team was at. Um, but yeah, that kind of leads us right into the next part of the episode with, um, team, team, Rin, Isagi, and Bachara, like I said, um, moving on to the third stage of Blue Lock and we kind of see Ego talk to the board for Blue Lock and he gets met with, he gets met with some criticism saying that the program has not been showing a lot of results and that, you know, if things don't start picking up soon, they're going to scrap the whole Blue Lock program. So Ego's like, you know what? We gotta we gotta start getting things moving. So he takes the final thirty five students and explains to them that they're gonna have the opportunity to play against the U twenty uh, team of Japan or under twenty team of Japan, um, <clears throat> and have a chance to actually join the team. And that'd be incredible. Um, be awesome. Yeah, I really like Ben. How? Oh my God, this show's so good, man. I really love how they deal with their dreams becoming reality. And I loved that conversation that Isagi has with all the group in the room where he's like, I think that the reason they should played us against the world five is that it is possible to reach our dream and that it's actually attainable now. Um, yeah. No longer like, um, is it just like a dream. They've seen physical evidence that this is actually possible. Yeah. Um, which I thought was amazing. I thought that was such a great scene. I loved that so much. Um, <clears throat> so I really like that scene personally. Um, yeah, so we move on to where the teams all meet up in the lobby to hear Ego explain to them what the situation is, and in doing so, we see the teams that have passed, and we see some familiar faces, and we don't get to see a lot of familiar faces, Ben, mm-hmm. most notably our boy Ichigo Kunigami, I don't know his name, Kunigami? Kunigami. Yeah, he ends up biting the dust and getting eliminated from Blue Lock. Definitely the biggest upset in my opinion, Ben. I yeah, I can't no, believe crazy. he lost. Oh. That is crazy. So it's, wh- oh, sorry, go ahead. It's funny like how I mean you can get carried, but like still like that the Iaguri guy and then Raichi. It's crazy how they made it and then Kunigami didn't. Yeah. Yes. It it really I was very upset, but I was going to say, Ben, so what team was he on that they ended up... He was with Rayo. He was with Rayo and... He was with Rayo and Nagi. No, Sigiri, Sigiri, yes. Yeah. 
That's right, because then they take Chiguri. Yeah. And, and then, then they it's Rayo the... and Kun... yeah, Kunigami. And they played this new guy, and then they oh, lost. Oh, that's right. Dude. That guy seems cool, though. I like it. Him. Dude, I will say, all these character designs look so good. Like, it really, yeah, but... it really pisses me off that Isaki looks so dumb, dude. I know. Like, he looks like, so bland. He's the most background character person out of everyone. I'm like, like, Chiguri, like, Kunigami... Bachira, any of these guys look like MCs, bro. Isaki does not look like he literally. Look, like, if he was standing with the World Five, I'd be like, "Dude, <laughs> you, need to, you need to buff up, change your hairstyle, or something, my guy, because you look so bland." But no, I will say I really like the hairstyles and the drip. I love how, even though they're all wearing identical jerseys, they're still able to like really like identify differentiate. differentiate them exactly. Yeah. Yeah, there's this one guy that kind of caught my eye. He looks cool. Yeah. Um, what was his name? God, they literally look like Super Saiyans, was... bro, with, like, pink hair. Yeah, this guy's name was Karasu, I think. I don't know, he kind of looked... He just looks cool. His hair looked really cool. No, mm-hmm. oh, yeah, I will say, um, a lot of their hair looks sick. Yeah, and there's this guy with glasses. He looked interesting. Uh, yeah, so I'm looking forward to... You yeah, know these people, and so obviously they're really good because they made it. So, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. I will say, who was it? This dude looks cool. The one who I, it was the one at the final panel. I think the one. Yeah, that guy. Okay. This one. I yeah. think his name was she Shido or something. Yeah. yeah, he was. He looks pretty sick. Um, God, I want to get the manga now, Ben. I really do. The arts, the arts, really good. Yeah. Um, so I, I like it a lot. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, um. So we, we get to meet a lot of these new characters and then it pretty much hits us with the to be continued and we got to figure out about what's to come. Um, I think um, I think since they changed their plans and they're going to play the U20 team, mm-hmm. I think this next election will be to find out who's going to start on that team because you forget that everyone's a forward. Yeah, so they start to figure out defensive positions and goalie yeah and whatnot mm-hmm. so i think this next selection is gonna be who's starting yeah no for real but wait so i was gonna say how is it gonna because a soccer team has 11 players and then a bench yeah. and there's like 35 so i mean there's no way all of them are gonna be on the bench oh, oh yeah i didn't think about that so, so there, maybe some people get cut too so you think they might get down to like 22, 30 people, maybe get rid of like five? Because you can yeah. have 30 people on a soccer team. <laughs> How many people are usually on a team, I think? That's a good question. I know in basketball, it's like 15, but that's obviously basketball. I mean, football's insane amount because there's so many positions. Oh, yeah. Baseball's probably a disgusting amount as well. So I'd imagine there's probably quite a bit of subs on a soccer team. On the U.S. men's national team, there are 26 players. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. So maybe they cut it down to like 26, 25, maybe to get yeah. the even, like a solid number. Yeah. So get rid of 10. Maybe yeah. they will cut some people. That, But yeah, nonetheless, I'm very excited, and I think it's going to be very fun to see them play the U20 team. Most notably because, we haven't even mentioned it yet, Rin's brother is on the team. His name's Seo, right? Is that his name? I say, say, Hoshi. Say, yeah. Um, and his brother was on the J- Japan national team, right? It's. Or was he? No. Is he just a good player that's on the YouTube? I, his team? brother went. Because we saw him in the first couple of episodes, I remember. Because oh, he was doing. He was walking past. He was doing an interview with someone. He walked past uh, yes. a Blue Lock thing. Yeah, yeah. And then he, that caught his eye. But I know he he went and played for Spain on one of their teams, I think. Like a club? or Yeah, I think a club. So, because I know, if I remember correctly, he said he didn't want to play for Japan. Because, oh. like, they didn't have any good people. Damn. So him coming back kind of says something. Mm-hmm. So that's pretty cool. Yeah, he's very interested, probably, what they got cooking. Um I'm very excited. I, You know, one of the things that kind of makes me upset, though, is that I really hope if the, we eventually do get to the day when 
they make it to the world national team. Um, it would really suck if it's just Isagi, you know? Like I don't think. I feel like... It has to be multiple. Or maybe they'll be like, this whole Blue Lock team gets to play as a national team. Or... Well, I feel like the whole point of, like, at the beginning it was like, we're going to have one person win this. I don't. I think that's just a sham to, like, bring out the best in everyone. Oh, so there's no think... way. There's no way that only one person is coming out of that. Yeah, well, it's like one of those things, right, where you'd be like, okay, well, these people might get scouted for actual clubs and stuff, you know what I mean, if it, they're that good, so. I don't know how long, like, they can't, they're, these people are all under 12, uh, like 17, 18. Yeah. Um, like, I don't know how long they'll continue the Blue Lock projects for, like, because... Mm -hmm. Saying, okay, I'm going to make you the best striker in the world when you're 17. You're going to be there for years. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. Yeah. Maybe it'll just, I don't know. We'll see, I guess. It's going to be interesting if how things play out. But I really hope, because I'm not going to lie, that'd be kind of a dud if it's just like Isagi with a whole new team or something like that. And, yeah. Or like, at least it would be cool if... If like two or three of them got to play on the world national team at least, like maybe yeah. like maybe Batra or like Chiguri or Nagi and him and or maybe Rin and him with his brother. I think it would be cool if like I don't. Know, I hope like I guess looking in the future, I wouldn't. I would want the excuse me. I would want the author to drag out the manga so like I feel like as soon. Like, if they win the World Cup, I feel like that should be it, but... Yeah. I think going up to there, it would be cool if... Kind of... Everyone branches off into, like... Different clubs? Yeah, the clubs or teams, and they're, like, mm -hmm. constantly playing... Uh, like, they're interacting with each other without being on the same team, so they're still, like, playing yeah. against each other and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. That would be cool. Or that would be cool, too, if, yeah, they all get to different clubs and they're all fighting for a spot to go to the world national team. You know what I mean? They're like, okay, yeah. well, I really got to show off in the clubs. Or maybe it's like Ichigo and Nagi on a team, on a club for Japan, and they're both trying to compete for the same spot. You know what I well, mean? That would be cool. Well, the whole thing the Kunigami can't play for Japan anymore because that was the whole thing of Blue Lock, like... If you lose, you can't represent your country anymore. Are you serious? So is that what it was? Yes. So he's done. So his like only hope of playing soccer is to go to a club or something in a different country. Yeah. But he can't <laughs> play. It's crazy. He can still play high school soccer, <laughs> but he can't play. He can't get on any of the U twenty teams or. Yeah. That's, That's insane. Tough. Wow, man. It's tough, yeah. You're right. But it has to happen. Now, Kunigami's the first big hitter that, I mean, I really hated to see go. Yeah. Yeah, especially over that, like, Connie lookalike dude. I'm like, oh, my God. <laughs> um, I don't know. Uh, but I also kind of like the development we haven't touched on. Rin, I feel like, especially, he kind of seems, he started out as this, like, very douchey, evil character. But he's kind of becoming more of like a Sasuke to me, in the sense that like like early Sasuke, you know what I mean? Or not early Sasuke. I guess Sasuke is not a good representation of him, but like more of like um, who would be a good who would be a good character to describe him? Like an Aki from Chainsaw Man. That's kind of the vibes I get from him in the sense that like he's kind of like an asshole, but like he means well, you know what I mean? Um, yeah. He's just trying to do his own thing. So I, I really liked Rin. He started off as this like very one dimensional like just jerk. I want to be the best, and has now kind of been like slowly becoming more like tolerable, and I think friendly with the the teammates. So I think that's good to know. Yeah. Um, I'm glad he's kind of not like Bachura, and is like or is that his name? Bar or Baru, sorry, Baru, and um, is not just kind of like a jerk bossing everyone around. So I like that about Rin. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that's pretty much all I have to say. Yeah, that's me too. Wow. Well, this was a good episode, Ben. We talked about a lot, a lot to discuss. Yeah. This week. Um. All right. Well, we've been going on for long enough, so you want to wrap us up, Benson? Yeah.
What is this, 55? Yep, 5-5. Right. Well, that's another episode down the drain. Um, it's been episode 55 of the Otaku Bros podcast. As always, my name is Ben, joined by my co-host Joseph. And we will see you guys next week with something, because I don't know what we're going to talk about, because all our shows are too. Yeah. It's, it's going to we'll, we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. <laughs> yeah. All right. See you guys. Peace. Arrivederci. I won't stop till I hear him say. Oh, 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 oh.